Hi folks, my fifth flight lesson begins with the instrument panel orientation, which became that much more important during my first in-flight simulated emergency engine failure. I also practice coordinated flight maneuvers, as well as more takeoffs and landings. So join me now, and we'll continue my journey together. Let's spend a few minutes talking about uh, what we find in the uh, cockpit of an airplane and uh, how we should deal with it. Uh, whenever we get into an airplane uh, that's new to us or uh, something different, you're flying a different plane or the first time you're in a cockpit, take some time to go through all of the gauges and the switches and the instruments and familiarize yourself with them before you start the engine, before you get you know, really into the flight and so forth. Uh, sometimes people think, well, you know, let's, let's, go, let's go flying, and they jump in the plane and go. You don't want to be wondering where the altimeter is when you're, you know, taking off and you're 50 feet in the air. If you take a few minutes to, to have cockpit orientation to begin with, it'll, it'll save you and make it much easier and eliminate that possibility of confusion. I'm going to start over here on my left. In my uh, Challenger 2, we have a... Uh, GPS. This is a Garmin uh, 196. It's an older uh, aviation uh, instrument, but it's, it's great for navigation and, and telling you particularly your ground speed. Almost all aircraft, modern aircraft, will have a master switch. Uh, that, that turns the power on to the whole uh, system of the aircraft. When turning this off, it, it kills all of the uh, draw on the battery of the airplane. So. Don't leave the airplane with the master switch on. You'll run down the battery. First thing you're gonna do when you, when you get into the plane to uh, get involved in is turn the master power on, okay? And that uh, gives you uh, power to the entire avionics system. Uh, above that, I've got a fuel, in this plane, we have a fuel pressure sensor, uh, or meter in this case, uh, that tells me what the fuel pressure is. Uh, this, this, lets, let, this lets me know that there's being fuel pumped to the carburetors, okay? In this plane, there's two uh, pumps. One of them is an electrical pump, which this switch here turns on, and I can prime and make sure that the float bowls of the uh, carburetor are filled, or if the mechanical uh, fuel pump went out uh, during flight, I, as an emergency, I could flip on this uh, electric pump, and it would uh, also give me uh, fuel pressure. Well, the next and the major instrument, and probably the most important instrument you're going to have, is going to be your airspeed. When we're flying uh, aircraft, uh, fixed-wing aircraft, uh, we, need, we have to go through the air, and we have to maintain a certain airspeed in order to keep the plane flying. And in this case, uh, we're gonna, we, need, we need to be flying at least 40 miles an hour in this airplane. You'll notice there's some different colors here on this, and these tell you, these arc, color arcs will tell you uh, important airspeeds in your airplane. But we're going to keep our eye on that. When we're taking off, we're going to just kind of glance at that and, and, and see when we get up to about 36, 37 miles an hour, and we pull the stick back, we'll, we'll rotate. Uh, when we're flying the plane, we're going to be flying in this uh, green arc here. We're going to probably fly mainly at 55 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, if you uh, uh, push the stick forward and start to dive, uh, you can, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, run the speed up. You don't want to go too fast. In this plane, the VNE, that is uh, velocity never to exceed, is 100 miles an hour. But uh, you'll, you'll feel it when the plane gets up there at a, at a higher speed. So we want to, you know, when we're flying along, we're going to be checking uh, other, looking out the screen, looking for other aircraft, looking at, at uh, places to navigate and the ground and so forth. But we're also going to be checking every so often and look at our airspeed just to make sure what it is. Airspeed is also critical in the takeoff. Uh, as I talked about in another segment of this thing, we want to take off and get our airspeed up to 55 before we do our climb out. And then uh, on landing, we want to make sure we're uh, in the 50, uh, 50 to 60 range, 55 would be good, to come in and do that, that final approach. The next instrument over here is our altimeter. And that tells us how far we are above sea level. So there's a little uh, knob here and a little window and you can and the uh, tower or you can look up and get the information of what the barometric pressure is and you can dial that in uh, on the window and that'll give you your your 
altitude above sea level. We're about 100 feet above sea level here. And of course, when you're flying, if you want to fly at uh, 1,000 or 1,500 feet or whatever uh, altitude you want to maintain, you can watch your altimeter. And they're, they're pretty accurate and pretty uh, uh, sensitive. So if you go up and down uh, 20 or, or 40 feet, you'll see it on the, on the altimeter. The next instrument here in the center here is called a vertical speed indicator, VSI. And it tells us uh, how much we're climbing or uh, descending uh, in thousands of feet per minute. So in this plane, with just myself in it on a cool, dry morning, uh, matter of fact, this morning, I was climbing at almost 900 feet a minute uh, when I took off. That's, that's a pretty good climb rate for this kind of a, a plane. Uh, and it'll also show your descent rate. So when you're getting ready to come in for landing, you can kind of look at this and say, okay, I'm descending at uh, three or 400 feet a minute, and that's a nice glide speed to come in uh, for your final approach. Uh, it is a delayed instrument. So that is, you might be climbing and it won't register until maybe a second or two or, or so after the climb has occurred. So uh, what you would first notice, for example, is if you're flying along and you push the stick down, you deload the prop and you'd, you'd notice you'd hear the sound of the engine increasing and you, want, you could see the RPM increasing over here. Then, maybe a second or two later, then you'd notice that the uh, VSI would, would indicate you're descending. So the kind of the important point there on, on this instrument is it's not instantaneous, okay? Okay, next uh, we have a turn and bank indicator. It's a ball here, and we use that to coordinate our turns and, and to measure how much uh, uh, of a tilt the, the wings have in them in terms of the roll. The, uh, this panel over here is all the avionics. This is the uh, EIS system, our engine information system, and it tells us lots of things about the engine. Uh, and in this system, you push the display button, it'll tell you what's underneath. Uh, the RPMs of the engine, the cylinder head temperature, the exhaust gas temperature, uh, the time in flight, and this is the fuel level. Down here we have a radio, and in aircraft uh, we use standard frequencies that, that you dial up with these various knobs and, and are able to talk to them. I have a little button on the top of my stick here that I can push, and it's the push to talk switch, it'll turn the transmitter on. When I have the headset on, I can transmit on that frequency. You'll notice this is uh, set to uh, 1229, which is going to be your standard frequency for non-towered airports, you know, usually in rural areas. And that's, that's pretty common. Now, some of them will be different, but that's a very common frequency we have. Next to this we have over here is a transponder. This uh, is, is for radar. When the radar signals uh, that track airplanes uh, hit this, this will transmit transpond out a identifier uh, showing that I'm uh, in the plane and I'm flying what altitude I'm flying. Uh, this is our intercom. Uh, these buttons here deal with the uh, squelch level of when we can mute the, the sound and then the volume. Down the bottom we've got a row of switches and of course over here to the left we have the master of the ignition switch uh, and it'll have a left and a right. Those are left and right magnetos of the engine. The engine has dual uh, ignition, uh, left and right for uh, the spark plugs in each cylinder. And then a start position all the way over here. Again, this was the uh, fuel pump, uh, the electric fuel pump for uh, boosting the uh, fuel to the carburetors. We have a strobe switch here, which runs strobes on the uh, tips of the wings. These are circuit breakers that I can pull out and, and uh, disconnect, or if there's an electrical short, they would, they would pop. I have a landing light on this plane. We don't really use it a whole lot because we don't fly at night. Uh, this is a fuel transfer switch. I have an auxiliary tank I can put in the plane and pump fuel uh, from that auxiliary tank into the main tank, so it gives me greater range. This switch here is the avionics switch, which turns on and off all of the avionics systems that are here. And again, we have a few more uh, circuit breakers there. Okay, that's basically it for, uh, for the instruments. One other thing you'll find in all aircraft is a compass. Uh, and, uh, and it should be you know, there and it'll be uh, usually calibrated with a card. This one doesn't have a card on it. Uh, and it tells you, of course, which direction you're, you're flying uh, by the compass. And go to the far east side of the runway. We'll take off to the west, I meant. Did I say east? I meant west. Take off the way. We'll take off on runway 27. Okay, same as we have been. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so we're going to do our mag check, right? And uh, does it matter what order we do this in? No. Okay, mags at four. Go left mag. Drops two. Go right mag. About the same. Yep. Bring it back. Oh. There you go. Okay. All right, that's good. It was that telling you that both cylinders and both spark plugs are working good in each cylinder. Right. Uh, Whitley Field, this is uh, Yellow Highlander, uh, I'm sorry, Yellow Experimental M125 Whiskey Delta, uh, ready for takeoff on 27. Very good, okay. Very good. We got a full tank of fuel. Both of us are in here, and uh, it's a summer day, so that's why our climb rate isn't real great. Okay. Gotta get us up to a thousand feet. Yep. Uh, we'll make a slow, gradual turn at 500 feet. Okay, slow, gradual turn. To the air park heading. You got a nice big green field right here in front of you. Yep. Bring it back the uh, RPM here a little bit. Simulated emergency. Engine out. Okay. First thing to do. Find the plane. Find the plane. Establish your good glide. Yep. Okay. Wind was out of the Look south. Look at your airspeed. Look at your airspeed. Look at your airspeed. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Push that nose down. Got okay. it. Got it. Nice big green, green field over there. Okay. All right. And wind was out of the south. So. Yep. Bring it around. We're only going to go down to about 300, 400 feet, and then we're going to power up. Okay. Can't make it to the other end there, so I should go to this other field here. Just make your best decision you can. Okay. All right, that's very good. Go ahead and power up and recover. Okay. You did real good. Oh, thanks. That's what happens when you have an engine out and you don't expect it. Yeah. Fly the plane, establish that airspeed, look around for where you're going to bring the plane down. All right, my airplane, I've got it. Okay. How do you feel, all right? Fine. All right, see this road down here to the yes. left? We're going to do some, I'm going to get up to 1,000 feet, and we're going to do some S-turns over it. I'm going to show you, and I want you to just follow along with me, okay? Okay. All right, we're going to turn around here and set up to cross that road on a perpendicular. Okay, now this road or the east-west? The east-west road. Gotcha. I gave myself a big loop here to make these big S's. Yep. What we want to try to do is maintain altitude and cross at perpendiculars, okay? Gotcha. And we're ready to go going that way, right? And I did it too close because I'm going to have a hard time crossing it at a perpendicular. Uh, you'll get it, but... All right, so I should have made the loop a little bigger. Okay. And I lost about 20 feet. Your airplane. Okay. Yeah, just you know, keep going. Just keep making big S turns. And the bigger you make the loop, the easier it is. I got you. Okay. Let's turn right. Right. All right, your nose is down a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Oh, very good. Now, after you solo, these will be something you come up here and practice. Turn about a point, S turn, that kind of stuff. Yep. All right, when you take your sports pilot test, this will probably be one of the things the instructor or the examiner will ask you to do. I got you. Okay, very good. All right, look at your altimeter. Yep. How much do you need to lose? 150. Yeah, all right. Climb back up to 1,000. Let's head on up to uh, Lake City Air Park. But you did real good. Oh, thanks. Off to the right, there's our uh, racetrack. Oh, yeah. And if you look on a sectional chart, you'll see a little oval. Yep. It shows that. Okay, I can see the air park, and I can see the tower we usually go around up there. All right. 
Which way is the wind blowing? It's coming from the west toward the east and maybe a little bit more north, north, uh, north northwest. All right, which way, which runway do you want to land on? Uh, probably on the, let's see, what are the bearings on that one? Uh, uh, zero, five, and two, three. Okay, I probably want to go on two, three. Yeah, I think so. Two, Entering three. a left downwind, right? Left downwind. For runway two, three. Yes. All right. Do you want to make a radio call to that effect? Or so, who you're talking to, Lake City Air Park. Okay. Who you are, where you are, and what your intentions are. Okay. Lake City Air Park, this is uh, yellow. Uh, experimental uh, F152, 125 W Whiskey Delta. Uh, we're uh, on a, on beginning a uh, left downwind for runway 24. All right, very good. It's 23, but that's very good. Okay, so now anybody that's the area, if they're taking off or landing or whatever, they'll do it. And we are at an airport, and that's where airplanes tend to be, so we're going to be extra vigilant and looking around for airport. Because some of these guys do not have radios. Yes. Yeah, that's real good. This is a real good downwind. You can look down there okay. and see the runway real well. Yep. See, there's nobody on it, and we don't see anybody else in the traffic pattern. Okay. Lake City Airport. This is a uh, yellow experimental N125 uh, Whiskey Delta uh, on base uh, for runway 23. Okay, base, I want to lose so out of you on the right frequency. Yeah, frequency problem? Well, you said Lake City Airport. It's actually Air oh, Park. Air oh, Park. crap, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yellow experimental, uh, you're on the uh, 22.9. Roger, we're well, landing at Lake City Air Park. Lake City Air Park. Lake City Air Park. Yellow Highway 125, Whiskey Delta is one mile to the northeast. Final four. I guess I'm still high here, 500 feet. Yeah, you're doing real good. Keep your airspeed up. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. I yeah, feel I like we're not quite enough. Yep. You are, you're actually a little low, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, we're traffic around the 46 Bravo is orbiting the field at 2,000 feet. Engine break in. All right. There's a Cessna's going to take off over there, but don't worry about him. Pull your throttle all the way back now. Push that stick forward. Stick forward. Wait. 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 Now ease gently. 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 Okay, beautiful. Well, you helped out a lot there. Yeah, I did. Lake City Airport, Yellow Highway, 125 Whiskey Down. I will uh, back taxi on the uh, southern edge of the runway. Uh, Lake City Airport, Yellow Highway, 125 Whiskey Down. Let's pull off to the side, uh, waiting other traffic. Lake City Airport, uh, not Lake City. I gotta remember that. Not the airport, but the airport. Uh, Yellow Highway uh, Experimental. Uh, we're ready for takeoff on 2-3 uh, on uh, uh, from Lake City Air Park. Very good. Stick back a little bit more right there. See it? You see it go off at that? Yeah. That? Yep. Sure do. Very good, 55 mile an hour, nice smooth climb out. Okay, yeah. Can we turn short of that tower or go around it? Either way, whatever you feel good about. Uh, I'm gonna go around it. Okay. If in doubt, it's always better to be safer. Yep. Smooth out up here. Yeah, we got up above the 700 feet. 
Right to the airport. Yellow Highway 125, Mr. Delta is left stage. They enter a left downward for runway 23. Right to the airport. Alright, you notice when we were landing that Cessna we had stopped there and was waiting for us? Yes. Well, he did that because we had announced on the radio where we were, and so he knew. And that's why these announcements are important, because he, if he hadn't done that, he might have pulled right out in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah, I got it. Lake City Airport, this is uh, Yellow Highway Experimental, turning base for 2-3. Okay, we're on base, we're going to turn to final. What do you think our altitude ought to be? Uh, I'm guessing uh, 1,000 and then we're going to bring it down to 500, so maybe I'm high already. Yeah, huh? I'd, I'd bring it down a little bit. Okay. Lake City Airport, this is uh, Yellow Highway Experimental, turning final for 2-3. Okay, now I want to get start losing some altitude here. Yeah, I would. That's why we voted so long. Right. All right, let's go back to the uh, runway and, uh, and head back home. Okay. Well, let's check back. All the way back. There you go. Feel that? That's oh, yeah. part of it? Yep. That's why you're getting off the ground. Yeah, I got it. Stick forward. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Do you know where Whitley Field is? I see. I see it. Okay. So I'm going to go around and do a uh, left downwind. Very good. VNE on this plane is 100 miles an hour. It's a velocity never to exceed. Yes. But you notice that there's a ye little yellow uh, column there in the airspeed, bunkers yep. on the outside of it. Yes. That's caution. Yep. Particularly when you get into turbulence. You don't want to be going real fast through the turbulence because it really shakes the plane violently. Right. How you feeling? Pretty good. Yep. You want to practice slips a little bit? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm ready to land. Okay. Uh, I guess I want to savor this, this great morning and beautiful weather. Okay, That's very okay. good. Very good. Yep. I mean, we're getting there. You realize we've done almost all the exercises, and now we're getting to, into more advanced exercises. Yeah. And slips will be kind of the next thing we cover. Uh, Whitley Field, this is Yellow Highway uh, turning downwind for 2-7. Uh, okay, we're coming uh, across uh, Route 41 here on the final, and we're lined up beautifully for Whitley Field. Uh, Runway 27, and we're bringing it right down for our drop over the tree, and they're nice and smooth, set it forward, keep it forward, set it rolled, hit, nice, forward, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Break for me, please? Yep. Beautiful job. All right. Your airplane. Okay. All righty. Just back home. Okay. Nice job, Bill. Oh, thank you. You did a nice job. You did a lot of stuff today. Uh, thank you. I, I uh, really had a good good time today. I enjoyed everything we did, and I feel like I'm learning slowly but uh, surely and trying to get to a more comfortable position. So. Yeah. Uh, we just need to, you know, go up there and shoot landing after landing, yeah. and. Uh, and at a certain point, it'll click. You're almost there. 
almost there, and uh, you know, another 10 landings or so, I think it'll sort of click in your mind a little bit, and you'll say, oh, okay. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, I appreciate your comments. Until next time, take care.